Hello everyone, welcome back. In this video, we will look at gradient descent. In the last video, we looked at a functional form for L of W, using which we can learn the weights of the logistic regression uh, function. And here, we are going to introduce the gradient descent algorithm, which can be used to optimize L of W and find the weights that maximize L of W. We are going to use gradient descent because there is no closed form solution available for L of W. We discussed that in the last video. And to continue here, we will look at gradient descent. We start with an initial point in our weight space, whatever va initial values of W we have. So those initial values are given by W here. So this is initial values of W. Starting from these initial values, we loop until convergence, and we'll discuss about convergence in a bit. We loop until convergence, and we update Wj, which is the jth W corresponding to the jth feature. So W consists of all the feature, all the weights of all the features, right? W one through n, if there are n features. And for each of these w's, we are going to use a partial derivative. So we already calculated this in the last video. We are going to use this, this here, the partial derivative of the function of w with respect to wj. We are going to use that here. And we already discussed the learning rate, which is telling us how much to change our initial value of w. So this, these two values give the initial or the starting value of w in that loop. So this is looping until convergence. Initially, this will be set to the initial value. And the next time it will be set to the starting value on the value before this with before updating. Right? So intuitively this is how it would look. Let's say we start here. So this is the initial value of W and we differentiate. So when you differentiate with respect to a curve, so let's say this is the curve, right? Generally, you will get to this point, you get a perpendicular line. So that is the differentiation at that point. So differentiating a function at a particular point would give you the direction perpendicular to that. And that's the direction in which you are going to make the update. And then learning rate gives you, learning rate times that gives you the amount you're going to change your previous value of w and then you make a step then you arrive here then again you select a direction which is given by the red arrow and then you make another step then you give get here then again you differentiate you pick the direction make another step then you get here so this we can see is the bottommost point here which if we are looking we are looking for that point right we are looking for the value of w which would maximize the function so that value ends up being this because this is in this curve this is the bottommost point and then we return this value of w now just to go over some stuff, derivative is a slope of the line that is tangent to the function. So that's what 
we discussed, right? So we have this point, we have a tangential line to that. Now that is the slope. That is what you get by using the derivative. The partial derivative would give you that. Now there are two things to keep in mind. Learning rate value whether if it is small versus it's large. If it is small, then you are slow to converge. If it is large, it may even fail to converge or even diverge. So let's go back to, to this, this diagram here. So we let, this is the step size that you are you are making right so this step size is given by learning rate times partial derivative right so if you have a small learning rate then the step size would be small so I'm just going to pick another color to illustrate this. Let's say it's smaller than what it is here, then you will probably arrive here, right? If it's a smaller step size. So to get a smaller step size, you need a smaller learning rate because your derivative value is going to be the same. Now, if you have a larger step size, suppose your step size takes you here. Right, for this step size from here. Let's say this is 1, this is 2, learning rate value of 1, learning rate value of 2. So this is your new step size. Right, this is step size 1 and this guy is step size 2. Right, so this is way greater. So this means we have a larger step size. which means we have a larger value of learning rate. Right? Now, let's say we are going with the smaller step size. For smaller step size, we can see that we need more steps to reach the bottom, right? Because it's taking tiny steps, you will be here and then you go another step. You can just visibly see that you need way more steps to reach the bottom. But what about you have a larger step size? You may be able to reach the bottom sooner that or achieve faster convergence. That is one upside to it. But it could also happen with the larger step size that you could entirely miss the globally optimal solution. How can that happen? So you have, let's say, you go here, and then let's say you go here with the step size, and then you have a bigger step size here, right? With a larger learning rate so you you were next one may maybe here so you came from the top you took you directly came to two and then you came to three and then you came went to four so which means you actually missed this is the globally optimal solution right you maybe missed it. So that is a danger or of running into if you have a larger step size versus a smaller step size. 